world where equality is just another euphemism for mediocrity, where participation is more highly valued than achievement, where just enough to get by is the new standard of excellence. There is a small minority of people who fight back against such apathy, who struggle daily to reach new heights. These brave few are the hope for the future, the bright shining light for the next generation. They are the ones who will lead us to the places we have never dreamed of, to the undiscovered country, to reach goals only a few can even begin to imagine. Unfortunately, none of those people could be here tonight, so kick back and relax. Prepare yourself for several hours of fun, friendship, fascinating conversation, and fabulous music. All those deaths have an alliteration and kind of a radio trick. Speaking of radio, you're listening to the most popular radio station in the history of broadcast radio, at least among stations that originate from Chris's living room. It's Curious Times. Your host is Curious Listener. Here she is, Chris. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Curious Times. It's Tuesday night. We know these ways to call it Twisted Tuesday. Twisted Tuesday. We got Nick Fox here. And um, it's been a while since we talked to Nick, so I'm looking forward to, uh, to talking to him. Your hair is getting so long and lovely. Love your hair. I, I'm glad you kept it going because you were ta- asking last time, should I cut my hair? And so um quickly just to let you guys know what's coming up uh, in the next week or so kathleen moore is here tomorrow jen and amy are here uh stop drop and think uh on curious times uh thursday night friday night is selva dutton night uh leah dawn what's that flower you got on she is here saturday sunday colleen craig the formerly artist formerly known as the psycho psychic and now known as the psychic of light and Monday, Diana Monroe. Tuesday, Lisa Nolan Shalosky. And so there you go. That is what's going on uh, in the next week or so here. A full week of programming, unless somebody doesn't show um, or get sick or some other unfortunate thing happens, like an alien abduction or something like that. So um, otherwise, we'll be here. And... Uh, Okay, so about Nick, most of you guys all know Nick. Uh, I can see that there's a few people that I only ever see when Nick is here. So you guys will go to the bottom of the list so we get to see you all night. (laughs) And uh, anyway, uh, Nick, of course, uh, hails from Australia. And he has uh, done a lot of research and just like doing. He just like does. He doesn't, you know, read about stuff. He does it and uh into all kinds of things spiritual and uh you know he's had all kinds of adventures and um he has this uh, awareness uh and has received a lot of trust from a lot of people as a guide and a teacher he uh, has a wide ranging uh and in-depth understanding of this world at his very tender young age and um he does uh deliver messages with caring and compassion that I haven't seen because with Nick it doesn't really seem fake like there's a lot of people out there that are all with the love and the sweetheart and the all this kind of stuff no no you can call in Jackie um and uh but with Nick I really think it's really quite uh genuine and legitimate and so uh, he does come at this with a very non-judgmental, um, considerate, he loves everybody, you know what I mean? He's one of those people. And uh, anyways, through everybody has to have one fault, eh? <laughs> uh, through his, he, he writes and reads, uh, does readings, he works on jewelry, he does a lot of crystal work, um, uh, crystal grids and all of this kind of beautiful stuff. Um, he spreads love and all this crappy stuff all over the place. You know, it's dripping everywhere. Watch where he step, you guys. Uh, but he does like to remind everybody about uh, just the importance of being playful. Don't be so serious all the time, you know. We can have fun with the spiritual stuff, you know. It doesn't have to be like Sunday school. So uh, get a hold of Nick at, his, at Facebook, Nick Fox Love, or uh, www.nickfoxlove.com. Tom, and here he comes, the man of the hour, Mr. Nick. Hello, Fox. hello, hello. How hello, is everybody young today? Man. <laughs> good, good. How are you? Excellent, excellent. I've had a fun, busy day. I've been awake mm-hmm. for 13 hours, and it feels 
Actually, that's a really good hour as well. I like those numbers, 13. Um, mm -hmm. I've been making jewelry today. I've been... <laughs> <laughs> I've been tossing salads today. I tossed a lot of salads today, actually, at my job at the salad, at the salad bar. Um, <laughs> I'm not in prison. <laughs> um, so yeah, I did that all day, and what else did I do? And now I'm here. Um, I'm awake and I'm aware. I'm not drunk, <laughs> as some people have actually asked me before. They're like, are you drunk while you do this? And I'm like, no. I do a video though where I'm drunk and doing spiritual teaching, um, but I haven't, haven't made those in ages. I was thinking about making them again. I don't know. I'm not sure yeah. if I can handle the so much alcohol. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know what? Like, it's important to take care of your liver, because one day you're not yeah. going to be in your 20s. Yeah, no and I'm getting I'm getting sensitive. <laughs> I'm one of I I was like debating I couldn't remember if I was 25 or 26 and I realized I was 25. So I'm not that I'm not that old. I'm still a young young chicken. I can still probably take another couple years of heavy drinking, <laughs> even though I don't do that. <laughs> I probably should well, though, right? I could be falling down drunk in three beers. You know what I mean? I'm a cheap date. Oh, that is actually so. how, yeah, that's how it happens with me now. I drink, like, yeah, three would be plenty. Plenty. Yeah. Or if I drink wine, I'm, like, oh, yeah. I'm very sleazy. That's, I think that's the most appropriate word for me is just sleazy. Like, I'm, ugh. I, need, I yeah. feel like I'm flipping a coin all the time and I'm, like, chewing something. Like, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's <laughs> hilarious. Um, yeah, I'm other than that, I'm just kind of living in Portland. I wish I could show you the... I don't know if I can flip out. This is this is a big step, for, but everyone, I think you should check it. It's kind of raining. You probably can't tell, but that's like Portland outside right now. Gray and gloomy and exciting for me. I don't know. I'm definitely enjoying the weather. Um, I don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to go outside. Like there's no like beautiful sun like pulling me outside. I have this like perfect excuse just to like sit and do nothing. Well, not doing nothing, but sit indoors and do things. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, so wait, wait, you got any of your jewelry handy that you were working on today? I do indeed, actually. Not that I was working on today, but I do have some that I have over here. I, was, I saw them this morning. I was like, oh, perfect. I can use these for the show tonight. <laughs> <laughs> How organized. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll just show you guys. Uh, you guys go to the r bottom right of your computer screen, and there's a little, uh, and it might say, um, it might okay. say, radio uh, style. Uh, hold on one sec. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Um, it might say radio style, and you can choose video only or hangout, and it'll make the webcams bigger. <clears throat> and then you'll be able to see the jewelry that Nick's going to show uh, quite a lot better, okay? All right, Nick, show, show, where's the drum roll? <laughs> dance, monkey, dance. <laughs> I know, I should have, like, some, uh, yeah, I'll play my my music again. <laughs> we're going grind. Okay. No. So we're starting big, <laughs> we're starting big and exciting. This is an amethyst, like, little cluster that I acquired okay. in a wonderful location. It's a very pretty cluster. And it's actually like a really raw, this one hasn't got any etchings, but it's just like a really raw like copper backing. But if you can kind of see, it's kind of green. That's just like the natural rust that I actually really love. And it's not toxic or poisonous or anything like that. So do not worry. <laughs> so that's one example. I've got something a bit more like pretty and cute, cutesy, I guess, now. This is a like really pretty tiger's eye. This will, this will look nice. Cause you get to oh, that is nice. Wow. That is yeah, nice. Yeah, it's a really nice tiger's eye that I wrapped with like a nice little backing and there's etching. God, this is really difficult. I don't know. I can't really, I didn't realize how hard it would be. Maybe I should. They always do this in the TV shows and stuff, don't they? They like, yeah. hold it like, oh, there's That's a background. But yeah, it's a beautiful That's stone. I was very like happy with that stone. Now, um, now bring that Wait, bring that back up because just as a matter of my own personal interest, um, yeah. <laughs> do, the the mm -hmm. thing that you're wrapping it in, um, yeah. like, does that? Are you cutting that out yourself, or is it yeah. is it kind of yeah. like 
free formed and you just have to fold the, the legs over or what? It comes, like, think of it like it comes like a sheet of paper, but it's a sheet of brass uh-huh. or it's a sheet of copper or something like that. And then I have to, like, like picture, you know, all the little prongs, like, them flat. So I draw that shape out onto the metal. And then I have a cute okay. little metal file that I, like, nice. and I just, like, hack around and cut out the shape. And then I do, like, all the etchings and stuff on the metal and sanding and filing and polishing and all that sort of stuff. And then, like, the very last step is actually setting the stone. And then I set, yeah. set the stone last. And then, of course, add the chain. Um, right. And oh, then, that's good. That's yeah, interesting. It's, it's such a fun process, honestly. And, like, now that I've, like, got these kind of this ability to etch onto the metal... I can, like, add this element of drawing. Like, I wish I had the one that I... It's all the way downstairs. It'll take me a second to get. But I love doing, like, beautiful kind of landscape etchings and stuff. And I do it on the back. Usually on the back of the crystals, like, there's nothing special on there. So you don't really, like, focus on it. So it's nice to have this kind of beautiful backing that has something a little special on there. But um, this is turquoise from, um, yeah, Sedona, Arizona, actually. Um, Let's see if I can do this perfectly. It's a really yeah. nice piece of turquoise. It went the wrong way. And then I actually melted this. This is from like metal forging. This is sterling silver that I metal that I melted down. Sorry, I'm I got to take my hand away. It's really difficult. <laughs> um, but I melted and then like formed into this kind of like creaturey. I don't know. Yeah. Shape, sort whatever. Of like, a spider, like a spider thing. Yeah, it looks like a kind of a some kind of creature. And then last but not least, I actually really love this one, this, like, backing and, like, the the combination is really beautiful, I think. It's just a smoky quartz, like, point. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Really beautiful, like, smoky quartz, actually, that I've had for, like, ugh, I don't even know how long. <laughs> like, probably four years or something. Um, and, like, awesome. really simply wrapped, so it's, like, you, you just pretty much only see the stone. But then on the back, let's see if I can get this, yep. like, close enough and, like, I'm not sure if it's in focus, but you can see the so kind I, of etchings that I do. So I draw that I mean, into the metal, and then I use chemicals to like oh. etch that into the actual metal itself. Um, awesome, awesome. Yeah, and that, it's super that fun. That like it. <laughs> it's like a better way. Because remember when I was trying to? I don't have mm. any of them, but when I was taking some uh, some um, the pedalite and punching holes, you know, to make to make little things. But like that seems like a way better way because what um what was happening is if you didn't get a per you know if it, if, if it was getting a little bit thin or something at the tip like it would because mm. it's all layered right you know what I mean yeah. it's all like so it would like it would like split it would wind up splitting when you're putting a hole through it with a drill or something and so oh, that's really? a, yeah cage idea. Like, not all of them, but yeah. I ruined a lot. I ruined a lot. You just don't know until you do it. And uh, Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, cage cage idea like that is uh, mm. not, like, that's not a full cage. I know, I love that's it. Cool. I do love it. I do, yeah, like, I've good. got, I've done a little bit of drilling, and, like, it's fun, and I really like it, um, but it's just really, like, difficult. And, like, they when I was doing it, like, all my drill bits, like, broke before they really got through anything, and, like, it seemed like a yeah. waste of money to me, but I did just get some new drills, and my housemate actually has a little drill press that I can use. So I'm going to try it out again and see what happens. I've got a, like a amylite, I think is how you say it. Like it's like a fossilized shell, but it's crystallized as well. I'm going to drill a little hole in that and see if I can, because it's already got a little hole in it. But I'm going to see what happens. I hope I don't destroy it. It's a really pretty stone, so if I destroy it, I'm sorry. Stone God, <laughs> but <laughs> I wanted to make it an ink- into a necklace. I had brought out some of my like we were talking the other night about you know stones and, and stuff like and crystals and that, and I was talking about how you know some of my very favorite ones are just rocks. You know what I mean? Just rocks that I find, hmm. and um, so I'll show you so, since I have a few of them still handy. Um, go ahead and make your camera bigger in the bo- at the bottom right hand of your screen. You can choose, uh, click on the thing that says radio style or whatever it says, and you can choose, like, video only. And um, so, like, this is just just a rock that I found, you know what I mean? Whoa. So awesome. and, um, and this one is so interesting. Um, it's, 
it's like I'm pretty oh, sure like I found this and like I've yeah. tried to you know, I don't believe this is painted on. You know mm. what I mean? I just believe that this is part part of the stone itself. Like I don't believe yeah. that's been painted on at all. And um it's really uh, smooth and um like it, it, it's sort of um like this is kind of purpley. Mm. Color's not showing all that great. And then this uh, other one is sort of a yellowy sand kind of a color in 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 the light. And mm. um it's it's really um like it's not smooth like this. Smooth like worn down um I don't know, I can't describe it. Porous, you know what I mean? Then yeah. then it's like just like this, like I found that. That's nice. I, I like that one. And it's just it's a little bit of a raised thing there, like it's just awesome, you know what I mean? I don't have yeah, any idea. Cool. It's just like a rock and then this one is kinda cool. Um it's multicolored as well. Yeah. I don't know if that's gonna come ac come across. Oh, wow. Um and you know, there's a little bit of you know, you can just see those lines in there and that's just all natural. And um, isn't that amazing? It's just the layers of like sediment and the like different minerals kind of I love have flat, a place I love over time. <laughs> not flat, you know, the sort of flat. Yeah, ones that's cool. I like them. You so can easily like, like those are much easier to drill into the stones than like crystals and stuff. Right. Yeah. yeah. But like you know, sometimes these are like the such. So awesome, just rocks. Yeah, I know, right? Just having them. I know. <laughs> I've got so many rocks to send back to um, Australia. I've got to, like, ship them in a container, I think, because, like, not actually, like, fill a container, but I need to ship it, like, in a different way, not through the post, because there's just so much, and it's so heavy. I've got so many big ones, and I'm just, yeah, i got to work that out. Because <laughs> I love them all, and I can't get rid of them. <laughs> I know, right? Not that's I'll get rid of all my clothes. Be, that's totally fine, but not my not my <laughs> crystals. That's got to be the hard thing about like doing this this work, this job. You know, it's like I don't want to let this one go, or you might choose a stone or a crystal that you've had, like you said with that other one, like for four years, and you don't. Yeah. You know what I mean, and now, but you know, now you're gonna, now, and then you want to make sure it goes to a good home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. Make sure it goes to a good home. Um. So anyway, so what's your uh? How much longer are you in? Like, is there any update to how long you're in the states for? Yeah, so I'm leaving in September. Like, my visa definitely runs out in September. I think it's like halfway through September, September 14th or 15th. That's a guess, but I'm thinking that's around the date. Um. Which is sad. I'm like honestly, I'm really sad. I'm gonna miss all like the people I met here. I'm just gonna miss America and I'm, well, Americans in general. Like some of America, not all of America, but some of America. But all Americans. Like I love all Americans. You guys are all amazing and just like so sweet and special and just fun. And I'm gonna miss just like being here. It's gonna be like I'm. Gonna, I'm definitely gonna miss the accent. I think I'm gonna miss like. <laughs> just every day I'm like oh my god I feel like I'm in a movie it's so funny because like most big movies people are speaking with an American accent so it's just kind of funny um, and but it's also exciting because I'm really ready to leave I think in like a lot of ways like not because I want to like get rid of or like uh, what's the word escape things but it's just more like I've been here for like almost four years this is definitely the longest like trip I've ever done and I'm just ready to go somewhere different. I'm not sure if I'm going to go back to Australia. I don't think so. Not yet, at least. I really want to go to Iceland. I'm looking into that, like, kind of right now about visas and all that kind of thing. I don't know why Iceland, but it just kind of jumps out. Um, I'm going to yeah, figure out yeah. what I do there. I don't know. I might work or something. And I think there's, like, a one-year working visa or something. Anyway, so I'm going to probably do something like that. And then... I don't know, probably by then, like by the end of that time, I'm hoping I'm going to have a bit more of a plan and I'm going to have a better idea of like where I want to go with things. Right now I'm in this wonderful, I guess a really wonderful but also horrible place <laughs> of like knowing that something's coming or knowing that I'm like on my way to figuring something out, but I haven't got it yet and I just kind of have to wait and I just kind of have to, 
it's like this idea of like I have to experience it to like kind of fully understand it, and I just kind of feel like I've got to wait for the world to kind of not not other people, well, but my world to kind of move a little. Yeah, <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just a matter of there's someone out in the world that, and it doesn't mean in a love interest way, but there's someone out yeah. in the world that you still need to meet uh, before yeah. you go back home. Or, I like, like that. That's kind of, point. Yeah. yeah, and and so. I really feel that. I mean, I've told this story before um, that yeah. I was uh, used to do a lot of career fairs, and um, there was a guy, and then so a lot of us from various educational, post-secondary, and other training type of programs and organizations, we hmm. and we were going to Aboriginal communities to do these, right? And um, and so, anyways, um, we would usually be the same representatives from each organization that were on hmm. the circuit doing them all, right? So you get to know yeah. the people, and yeah, and and uh, you know you either watch my booth while I go have a smoke, or they come smoke with you. You know what I mean, or whatever. And so, um, uh, so the one guy I was helping him carry his uh, display unit out and everything else like this, and he was just so down. And and you know mm. I'm like, what's you know what's going on? And he's like, I just I I really want to leave, and I don't know why. I just don't leave, and I. And I just stopped, like, and and I I said, you know, probably why you aren't leaving yet is there's somebody who needs you to be there mm. still. Mm. They'll come one day and they need you to be the one that's there. Mm. And then when that happens, you'll be you'll know it's okay for you to go. Mm. And he cried. He started to cry in the parking lot there. You know what I mean? And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so next time I saw him though, like um, he just he thanked me for that and and he had left and and yeah. was working elsewhere. But uh, um, that's sometimes cool. that's really what it is, you know. Like is that there's something holding you there, and you don't know what. Like why am I not moving? Yeah. Or doing your work? <laughs> and uh, and so um, so. And I think it's a really beautiful lesson in, like, patience. Well, not even a lesson. It's just, like, a good experience in just being, like, oh, I can just, like, wait and enjoy the kind of process. Um, yeah. yeah, that's really beautiful. Thank you for that. I didn't think about that. I'm hoping I kind of meet... Did you ever watch the TV show True Blood? No. Did you ever see the new... Um, well, do you know Alexander Spatz? God, I think is how he say his name, Swatskard or something like that. Anyway, he's this really tall, like muscled, blonde haired, like Scandinavian man. I don't know where he's from exactly, but he's kind of like the perfect image of what I'd like. Um, yeah. So I'm hoping I mean something like that when I go to Iceland or something. Like some, someone, some, they're, they're human beings, Nick. They're human beings. <laughs> 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 oh, you make me sound terrible. <laughs> but just, that's like my ideal image. Like, it's funny, my workmate actually, he's very similar. He's, well, he says the same sort of thing, and he's like, all you want is like a Greek god. Like, that's what you want. And, like, you got, you're you not going to settle for anything. And I'm like, well, maybe. I'm not like that happy. I've liked people that are, don't look, you know, like Greek gods. <laughs> But so funny. So little funny. Great God. <laughs> and you could probably get one, you know what I mean? But you know what's really? gonna happen. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, you know, you think you could, but but then in terms of having a, a, a spiritual community of interest with this person and you know, you might find that there's something missing. Like the, That's funny, the, I was the, thinking about that. <laughs> fun times are fine fine, but uh, after that um, you know what I mean? There needs to be something yeah, what else, else there. Uh, yeah. And um, and so sure. you might. Well, I wasn't with saying I was gonna like, people. you know, have a relationship with this person. They're, I said I just wanted, very, you know. Very, 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But hear, you know, I, I'm, I'm I'm playing it. You know, I'm just playing the the field or whatever. I'm just I'm just seeing what's available. Um yeah. And then I'll yeah. then I'll decide. Yeah. You know. <laughs> Your dog at home now. Dog went home. Yeah, he's he's home. He's yeah. having a, an amazing time. Like, I'm not worried about him at all. Um, <laughs> I get constant like photos and videos from my family. They're actually all together right now. It's it was just Easter, so they're all together for Easter. And Easter is like a big holiday in Australia. We 
it's not like as big as I don't know New Year's, but it's it's a you know it's a sell. It's kind of like our Thanksgiving. I think it's just like another excuse to everyone to like come around and eat as a family. And we do a lot of chocolate. Like it's all focused on chocolate eggs. We don't have any plastic eggs or any of that nonsense. I don't know what you guys are doing here with like plastic eggs full of candy. Like who wants candy on Easter? You want chocolate, pure chocolate. Anyway, I'm biased because I just love chocolate. But anyway, that's my only frustration with America. Is is yeah. how you celebrate Easter? <laughs> you guys need to change your ways. <laughs> Don't see. <laughs> anyway, I'm, um, you know, I'm not. Yeah, I've been talking to a lot because it's Easter yeah. time, and they've been showing me a lot of videos of him just looking so cute. Oh, he's so yeah. happy. He's so happy. But he's gotten fat. I mean, not fat. He's gotten thin because they're walking oh, him a lot more than me. So I kind oh. of. I I didn't fail, but I you know I probably could have walked in more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Stay lucky. Oh, that's all right. That's sure he's happy. Um, he probably misses you too, but you know. Oh. Um, he does. He does. I can tell when I Skype them and I talk over the phone. Like I know he hears me. He doesn't respond, like obviously, yeah. but I know he can hear me, and he's kind of like, Ugh. he doesn't like mm-hmm. it because he knows you're not there. You know what I mean? Like he just ignores it because he's like, Ugh, you're not. Like I can't smell you, so you're not like actually here, so I'm not going to really care. <laughs> um, my ears, so you're of no use to me. Exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. you're not important. <laughs> Otherwise, there's no for you. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're all happy and having fun, and I, like, I'm happy and having fun. They actually sent me a massive box of chocolate um, for Easter, which I, I actually requested. Um, but mm-hmm. I was very happy I requested that. Um, Mm -hmm. I've started exercising a lot more right now, which actually feels really good. Like, I don't really, not like a huge, it's not like I don't think it's good or anything, but I'm just like never really that interested or, you know, in doing it. I don't really enjoy it. But now I'm really kind of enjoying it and it feels good and I feel connected to my body and some, it's not really a new way because I used to like work out all the time at school, but I don't know. It's just fun to get back into that. Um, I feel like I'm, you know story of my life kind of thing. <laughs> the spiritualness is a really interesting thing for me right now. I feel very, what's the word? Like when I used to do readings for people, I would feel like hundreds of like souls or whatever. I'd feel like just so many like kind of voices wanting to connect. And now it's very like few. It's very quiet. It's very peaceful. It's very like it's weird. It's honestly very uncomfortable for me because I'm so used to in readings talking very quickly, and now it's making me kind of talk really slowly, and oh, yeah. like well, you're gonna see. I don't know. We might see in the the readings to come, like if I talk slowly. But <laughs> but I've been noticing it. Yeah, it's just been kind of making me slow down a little, which I think is good because sometimes I'm like gasping for air, but. I also really enjoy the pace, you know what I mean? It's like very exciting. <laughs> um, Listen, yeah, that's um, we had, uh, we had um, Lizzie Star on the show uh, in the past month. Oh, you did? How is she? Yeah. I haven't spoken to her in so, so, so long. I do think of her every now and then. I miss her. Oh, I do miss her. It's because of you and Kathy from Kathy's Distant Echoes, I think, because um, the last time when the schedule got all, all messed up for you, um, yeah. I had, you know, posted the show and everything like that and then and then saw your message and, and so I had to go back onto Facebook and say, sorry guys, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, I also had a couple of other uh, blank days there, so... I was saying, like, I guess I won't see you guys till whenever, you know, Friday or whatever it was. Yeah. And um, all of a sudden, out of the blue, I got a private message from Lizzie Starr in yeah. Facebook. And she's all like, oh, like, uh, if you ever, you know, if you ever have an empty spot there or whatever, I'd be happy to yeah. come on. And so, I, you know, I, we, oh. we arranged for it in the next week she was here. And, uh, yeah. and it's really nice to catch up with her. She's... um. In the States, just for a couple of months, maybe only a oh, yeah. more month now. I'm going to try and get her back on one more time before she goes back, uh, yeah. you know, to the UK or wherever. And so yeah. I was kind of, every time that I think about, um, you know, Lizzie, I think, you know, you guys all kind of like remind, you know, remind me of. And I think yeah. that it was uh, through uh, her show that I 
uh, I booked you and and um, yeah, I think so. That, I used to do yeah. all my recruiting that way. Like I'd be like, mm-hmm. I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, in private message. I'm like, I gotta get you on my show, you know. And um, and so, uh, so that that That's reminded really me cool. of. That's really and, cool. And I knew want to hear about uh, about so so thanks for canceling on me last time. Because otherwise, <laughs> it worked out. Okay, good, good. Because I did feel really bad. Um, like everything. For, like she didn't come on that night, you know what I mean? But yeah, but, but she, if, it inspired the, the action. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. And so again, yeah, like all right. happens in you know when, and it's not oh, always you know, it you know sometimes that's good true. things come out of what what what's an unfortunate thing, you know. And so, um, so there you go. Well, that's why I'm um, kind of giving I've given up trying to like late. Well, I'm you know I'm still a big labeler. Like we're all kind of labeling things good or bad. But I'm doing my doing my best. So that just sounds so weird, doesn't it? I'm see, I'm labeling my words, especially right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've just been really kind of in the space of like just going with it, and it's not really meant to be understood. It's meant to be kind of known, known through experience, or maybe seen, or admired, or whatever you know your mind wants to do. But it doesn't really need to understand. And understanding, I think, comes into like that idea of yes or no, good or bad, right or wrong. Um, right, right. But anyway. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Many things are you like <laughs> um, and my pe- People are going to think I'm like, oh, but I, you'll, you'd be interested to hear this. Um, yeah. uh, uh, how, how, uh, again, it's another lesson in how the universe works in such mysterious ways through us if, if we're there and available to it, you know? And um, so Mary Margaret was uh, calling in last week. We didn't have much going on or whatever. And so Mary Margaret had like a an EMF meter, you know, and 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 whatnot. And and she was talking about how it had been lighting up and stuff. And so I go, well, let's 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 test it. You know what I mean? And so we were working through. And she was like, okay, mom, if that's you, then you know, make it light up and do this and that. And so I'm like, well, let's ask it a different way. You know what I mean? And so I was like meaning to just throw out a Jane Doe, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, to throw out a name. I'm trying to say that if it's if it's you know if you're not this person or whatever kind of thing, you know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. just tossing out like I should have just said Jane Doe, but I didn't. And yeah. I just like made this. I just like said like Patricia Davis and like Mary Margaret just about fell off her chair. And, because that's like the name of her cousin who had died two years to that day or whatever. Really? Wow, that's or, awesome. And all that kind of thing. And I'm all like, you know, that's crazy, you know. <laughs> and so her cousin was all like, you keep asking for your mom and like, I'm here, you know. And so she found a way. Mm. And that's the interesting thing is like that that mm. spirit can find a way to um, use oh, other yeah. methods. Just like if it's a sign on the side of a bus or somebody's mm. license plate number or a song on the read, like they find ways to work mm. through, you know, to get their messages to you, you know? And, oh, yeah. um, well, and think so, about it like this, like you're, you're the center of your universe. So everything outside of you is like there to serve you, there to be like your message. Well, yeah, your message from God. And then for me, in my universe, everything outside of me is my message from God or whatever, like God or source or yourself or really is yourself, but you know what I mean. Um, yeah. And in that kind of like view and that understanding, it's like everything, everything can become a sign or everything's a message. Everything like has significance and importance. And it's, it's not to like, uh, how do I put it? It's not to like minimize those special moments, but it makes those special moments even more special because you, I don't know, you just, you're already in that special place in like lots of other ways. And anyway, but yeah, that's a fun idea to play with. This whole mm-hmm. thing is like exactly for you. And I, I like believe that in the sense, like, because if you really think about this, I, I don't know, maybe this is like too deep and meaningful. Do we need to like take a break or something? Because I could go into this for like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> song break and then now okay. um kimber kimber if you're looking for a reading can you push one one on your phone right now or push one one on your phone right now kimber 
or I will assume you're listening. And Jackie, I know you're in queue. Um, Chrissy, uh, if you're waiting for a reading, can you press 1-1 one, one on your phone? I'm sure she's going to want to read. Oh, yeah, she did. And Carol, I think you want a reading because I see that you called in. And, um, well, you got, you, you can't, like, you've done this once or twice before, right, Gabby? So do you got to call in? Hey, <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how it works. <laughs> And so, um, so it looks like there's, uh, Kimber, can I ask, here, I'm gonna, Kimber, push one, one, if, okay, push, just unmute your damn self, okay, Kimber? <laughs> okay, she might not be at the phone, so I'm just gonna leave her alone. And, um, so we're gonna go, um, uh, with, uh, Chrissy, and then Jackie, and then Carol, and then if Gabby calls, so we'll take a song break. We'll let you say what you wanted to say, and then we'll get into the readings, okay? <laughs> okay. I'm going to quickly okay. go get some water as well. Yeah, yeah. For you got lots of time. Don't, don't, don't run with any scissors or anything like that, okay? And uh, let's see. Let's find uh, a song. These are the times to remember. Here, Billy Squire. Okay, welcome back. Uh, Nick is still here with us. Nick, you were uh, wanting to talk about something right before the break. Uh, no, that's we can we can skip it. <laughs> um, okay. It was David. I would say it's a tangent. It was not even that important. <laughs> it's just my mind and its weirdness. Right. Okay, well then. Uh, Thank we you. Though. <laughs> no problem. No problem. See, now I shouldn't have played the song and I should have just let you go, you know what I mean? Oh, no, um, no. That's why uh, I was like, stop talking, because it, it would have, like, I don't know, it would have just been a cycle spirally conversation of ideas that no aren't worries, really... No worries, no worries. <laughs> well, uh, I'll do a quick shout-out. Amy is there, Carol, uh, Christy who, Christy, Dan, the man. Hi, Dan. And, uh... Diane is there, um, Mary Margaret, meeting Renee Richards, and uh, Carol again, um, Chrissy is on the phone, Popeye, uh, Jackie is on the phone, Kimber is there. And so the way it's going to go, unless I hear differently, Kimber, you're going to need to just like unmute yourself later if, if you're wanting a reading, because so far you haven't responded to my request for uh, you to push one or one one or do whatever to let me know. So I'm assuming you're listening. Uh, so it's going to go Chrissy and then Jackie and then Carol. I still don't see uh, Gabby. Uh, did Gabby leave? Where's Gabby? I think Gabby left. Okay, Gabby's not here. Um, and Popeye was asking, but then I didn't see him call in. So looks like maybe just three. Can you guys hear me? Is my sound okay? Yeah, I can hear. Okay, yeah. I'm going to just quick reset my... Okay. Uh, every night, like, I'm having to restart my audio engine quite a lot. Um, and so, uh, anyway, um, so that's who's here. Uh, that's who's getting readings and that I can see is Chrissy, Jackie, and Carol. And so that um, that's, that's all I know about that. So um, with that said, why don't we get Chrissy up over here then? Hi, Chrissy. Hi, Chris. Hi, Nick. Hey, how are you? How are you? Hey, Nick. Um, you actually made a, um, a necklace for a, for a friend of mine. Uh, the, oh, really? The River Pearl. The fertility oh. necklace. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so thank you so much for putting a lot of thought in that, into it. Um, yeah, my pleasure. It, yeah, thank you so much. I really, I had so much fun making that one as well. It was really, like, it's just, I don't know, I love my jewelry so much. Like, I gave away just, you know, some sidetrack, and I'm, I I will give you a good, excellent reading. <laughs> but the person, I made a necklace for someone, and I gave it to them today, and, like, the backing, I etched into all this, it, all this weird stuff, and it was, like, I kind of just went with it, and it just felt right, and I had to draw this, and I had to draw this next. 
and like I was talking about her life and just saying like it's just about your transitions and how you kind of embrace change and move with it and keep flowing and I see you becoming you know stronger and you're standing up for yourself and all this stuff and then she like goes into this whole conversation about how she wants to break up with her husband because she feels trapped with him and she had time away from him she feels so empowered when she wasn't with him and then how she's transitioning all the time and just all these like wonderful connections and it just makes me very very happy and I feel so like I don't know, grateful that I just get to do that for people. <laughs> thank you. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so did you have a question or did you want me to um, dive right in? Do you have a preference? Start right in is good. Yeah. Diving right in? Okay, cool. That's Chrissy, right? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, Chrissy. Beautiful. Um, big movements, big changes. Um, I definitely feel like like I'm getting this smile because I really feel like that's your energy coming through in a lot of ways. Um, don't doubt yourself. That's like a really big message just right away. Just don't doubt yourself. Don't doubt yourself. But anyway, anyway, sidetrack, sidetrack. Um, so you're going through really big, beautiful changes. And like you're making these changes and you're doing the kind of the work. You're kind of putting the time in and you're really, uh, you're really powerful because of this, because of your, because of, I guess simply put, because of your ability to change your ability to kind of go with the flow in a lot of ways. Um, I feel stuff changing, like, with relationships to do with your mother or something like that. I definitely feel, like, connections with, like, maybe it's not just your mother, maybe that's just a symbol of women, but I don't know. I just felt your mother. Um, I feel you maturing in this kind of new way, and I feel you really listening to your heart and really kind of being respectful of that. Like, I think that's a really good word for you as well, respectful. And it's, like, respectful of yourself. And, like, what do I want and what do I need? And really caring for yourself. Um, you've definitely become a more compassionate person through this as well with other people. And you're kind of listening differently or you're kind of interacting differently. But anyway, this just keep going with what you're doing and keep going with these changes and these movements and these kind of new understandings about yourself. Um, I feel you're taking, like, kind of, new steps but it's like baby steps maybe or like you're just being gentle and you're kind of taking your time and it's really good it's really good um but there's this encouragement of ferocity and ferocity in the sense of like passionately pursuing you and what you want and what you feel and what's like inspiring to you um i see you kind of making time for yourself but not like really diving into yourself and kind of like, you can do taxes and have the time of your life. Like, that's really up to you. And I'm not saying, like, you have to do that. And, like, don't think that you should or anything like that. But our ability to do anything with joy, with happiness, with patience, whatever, whatever we want with it, whatever emotion, whatever experience we want with it, our ability to do that is 100% our, you know, control. It's, it's under our control and it's under our, like, ability, you know, it's under our kind of, under our control. <laughs> um, so really work with that. Really work with playing, like really it's kind of playing with yourself and playing with your usual patterns of doing things. Um, I'm not sure, you've, I think you noticed this in yourself. You changed, you kind of become different with different situations. And I think a lot of people do this. Like, you know, you kind of, when you're working, you kind of become a different person. And when you're doing this, you kind of become a different person. When you get home, you're a different person. Um, and they kind of want you to blur these lines. And they want, you, they want you to be yourself all the time. We don't have to perform as much as we want to. Like, this is something I've really started to realize in, like, like I'm doing service industry in, like, where I work. And I'm like, so I've always done service industry with all of my jobs. And I was always all about, like, the customer, customer, customer. And... It was never bad, it was never wrong, but it it was unsustainable for me. Do you know what I mean? It was unsustainable for what I was trying to do. And I wanted to help people, I wanted to be a server, I wanted to be there, you know, present and aware, but if I wasn't if I wasn't really taking the time for myself or like doing that in a way that was comfortable to me, I would feel drained, I would feel tired, I would feel you know, uncomfortable after a while as well, just like not, do I didn't want to do it anymore because it felt like I was being drained. Um, so if you feel like there's situations that just in your life that are kind of draining you or pulling you down or, you know, holding you back or anything like that, start to shift how you feel about it. Start to shift 
you know, what you know about it, and that will help you kind of break away from it. That will kind of help it. And I, it, in truth, like, it will just kind of fall away by itself. Um, you might have to do some things, but in a lot of cases, it will just disappear. It won't kind of, you won't really have to do anything. It depends on how, <laughs> you know, if it's maybe you've got a fear of spiders, that's probably easier to get rid of than, like, I don't know, you've got a husband and you want to get divorced. That's probably a little bit more complicated because <laughs> you to sign papers and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you know what I mean. I hope that makes sense. By the way, I, I should have stopped and checked. Absolutely. Did, did Absolutely. any of that make sense? Okay, good. Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, do you have any questions before I continue? Um, I have a question about my daughter. Hmm. Um, she's young, and. She's already, like, being labeled as a lesbian. Hmm. And it's like we've taught her to love. It doesn't matter what color they I mean, what color, race, gender, it doesn't matter. Just love. Hmm. But when other kids are starting to bully, you know, and start calling her names just because Mm. she's going to be going into middle school you Mm. know I don't know where she is at this point like you know um, as for if it's you know like if she is or if she isn't Mm. Um, but I just told her you know what had happened was she was um, my friend was over and her her daughter was over with another Mm. girl and my daughter was getting comfy with her, you know, like hugging her and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, my, my daughter's 11, and my one friend's just like, um, are you not seeing this? I'm just like, mm-hmm. I didn't think that it was an issue. Mm-hmm. But apparently at school, like, my daughter hugs and holds hands, and I don't think that's to label mm-hmm. something like that just for mm-hmm. doing that. Like, what mm-hmm. I think that's her – more Especially being that passionate. That's what yeah. I'm saying. You know, it's just like I taught her to love and care for people, show affection, and but she even said, or you know, like when I asked her, she mm. said, "I think I may be." Mm. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. This is like a perfect, juicy, wonderful. Like I, I feel you. I totally feel you, and I feel the concern. I definitely feel that. Um, and respect that, really respect that. And I, I really respect you for that. I really respect you for like really putting this focus and this thought into this, you know, into your daughter, into your, you know, your love. You know, this is really beautiful. This is really powerful. Um, but we need to shift it a little bit. <laughs> but we need to change it in the sense that like you're doing everything right. You're loving her. You're loving her. But you're doing it in a way that like, is in a way like it's affecting you. It's kind of pulling you down or straining you or stressing you or, or tensing you up and that kind of thing. Um, so work on, not just about wording, I don't think it's just about wording, but like reaction as well. You know, if she, if she does, and like I'm sure you did say this, but like if she does say like, oh yeah, like I'm, you know, I don't know, but like I'm maybe, like yeah. you're like great, like it doesn't matter. And I'm sure you were like that. And then if, you know, she does talk about kids are bullying her at school and they said this and they said that kind of, it's not like putting the blame on them, but just shift it and be like, it's just a, like, they just don't understand. That's okay. Like they're just trying uh, to what understand I told it. Her today mm. was somebody is always going to judge you, whether mm. it's the shirt you're wearing, the color of your skin, whatever. There's always somebody judging you mm. and, you know, to focus on you and what makes you happy because love is exactly mm. that what makes mm. you feel good, mm. you know, and, but. So that's your perfect, that's your perfect kind of role. As a mother, I think you're, if you're going to give feel like any I'm role. It is up. To be, no, no, you're not. You're not, you're not at all. Like the best, the best thing you can do is love. The best thing. So if mm-hmm. someone, like you said, there's always going to be someone that judges. So be that person that loves. You know what I mean? Just right, that's right. kind of simplify it down, simplify the whole situation. You can't protect her from everything out there. She right. is she's in her own world and she's going to do what she wants to do and she's going to face those things. And it's not like 
like we this is something I really believe and we don't know if we all believe this, but I do really believe that everything that we experience is kind of agreed upon and like our whole self, our whole soul, the whole universe works together Absolutely. to create that situation. So if someone says something mean to her, yes, in that situation it hurts her and or she, you know, or she's confused or, you know, whatever, like something something is stimulated from that. But it's her growing. No matter what, it's her growing. Like, don't be afraid of her being afraid. Be excited that she's afraid. Be excited because it's not, ex- it's not exactly something bad. It's more like someone said it's this. Our line journey, to, think, right? Like, it, it is, is meant it is. to happen. Someone said this to me the other day, and I loved this. I just love this image. Like, the reason the future is black, or the reason when we try to, like, you know, we close our eyes, or you know, we think about tomorrow, or whatever, like. It's kind of black. It's mysterious. It's because it's our job to kind of bring light to it. It's our job to kind of go and experience it and see it in, you know, daylight or whatever, you know, to see it in our eyes and to see it before us. Um, and so, like, this is kind of what she's doing. That's her discovery process. This is her way of just kind of finding self-determination and finding, you know, like, these labels. Like, maybe she didn't even think about this before someone said it. And, like, maybe this is, like, and this is the thing, like, why I don't want to, I don't want you to try and understand it, or why I want you to try to, I don't want you to get into the details of like what's said or what's happened or that kind of thing, because that's not for you to sort out. That's for her to figure out. You can cut, mm-hmm. you can give her advice when she comes to you. You can totally give her advice and share what, how you feel and that kind of thing, but you can't go over to her and say this is how you should think about this or this is how you should feel. And I don't think you're doing that. So I'm like, don't think I'm you know saying okay. you're doing that. <laughs> But, you know, your role is to kind of, like, I really want you to get this image of yourself as just sitting there and being this, like, beacon of love, like, like you know, seeing, um, what, what's her name, like, Quan Yin or something like that, like, some beautiful, like, goddess, just, like, sitting there, and then your daughter, whenever she wants to, you know, come along, she'll come and sit on your lap and ask you a question, and you'll sit there in your state of love, of loving her, and you'll give her the perfect response. Like, see, that's the thing, like, we kind of, like I said at the very beginning, like, don't doubt yourself. Like, don't doubt yourself because you, like, you're already the perfect mother. You're already the mother that she wanted. You're already thinking what she wants. Like I said at the beginning, I'm not sure if you heard, but at the beginning of the show I said, um, for me, this whole world, that I, everything that I'm seeing, everything in front of me, everything that I'm, you know, experiencing is there for me. Is there for me to kind of sit and experience and admire and enjoy and kind of, you know, grow with or whatever. And that's the same for you and that's the same for your daughter and that's the same for everybody. And so you're playing a role for her and she's decided on this role and she's you're being exactly who she wants you to be in her world, just like she's being exactly who you want her to be in this world. So, And you know that, like, you know that she's perfect and, like, yeah, like, I couldn't, like, you wouldn't want to change her because she's your perfect creation, just like everything else that... Sometimes we get a little judgmental about the other things. But kids are so easy to love, I think. <laughs> but anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, so you've got this great love for your daughter. Share that love. And that's, that's the, the biggest healer, the biggest protection. If she's upset about something, say, I love you, and she'll smile. And that, that is the healer. That is the kind of, if you want to change someone's mind. Like, I do so much talking. And, like, this is why I think, I, I said this before, like, I'm trying to slow down, and I, I feel like they're trying to slow me down, but <laughs> once I stop going, it just doesn't slow down. But <laughs> but the reason it's kind of, we want it to, like, slow. We want it to, to experience it. We want to kind of go through the flow. But anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. Um, you're doing exactly what, like, <sighs> sorry, they just gave me a really good way of putting it. So you're doing exactly what you're meant to be doing. Knowing that makes you feel good. When you feel good, you respond, you react, you say things out of that space of feeling good. So if you feel good for your daughter, no matter what she's going through, like you can feel compassion and still feel good. You can feel someone else's pain and still feel the answer for them. You know what I mean? You can still... Exactly. You know, exactly. You can, so you can do that for her. And like you are doing that for her. You know, like that's, I guess that's why at the very, very beginning they were like, don't doubt yourself, don't doubt yourself, because it's like, that's pretty much the answer to that, <laughs> that question. It's just don't doubt yourself. You're doing exactly what needs to happen. She's doing exactly what needs to happen. The world around her is playing, you know, it's, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's difficult. I'm not saying she might have times where she's, she'll be crying or she might have times where she's jumping up and down dancing and having so much fun. Like, 
that's all part of it. But it is, it is what it is, and it's like what you all chose. If you see it in that, if you see it in that space, it feels pretty good. It usually it feels pretty good <laughs> to see it like that and to feel it like that. And then through that, this is why I'm I'm trying to like put it in a like understandable way. Through being in that space of good feeling, you then experience well not only experience the world in a good way, but you interact with the world in a good way, and you you make a good impact. You know, you see like Gandhi. Like the reason Gandhi had such a good impact was because he was in his space of love or whatever it was. It doesn't like need a word. It was just him, I guess. But he was in that space so strongly and so beautifully that he was. He was there for everybody so clearly and strongly and, you know, defined. Um, that's why all the spiritual teachings are like, be yourself and, and you know, love yourself and all this sort of stuff because it gets you in that place of... And, like, I don't even want to put words to it. I don't want to say, like, empowerment, but I guess it kind of does feel like empowerment. I don't want to say, like, love, but it really does feel like love. I don't want to say happiness or joy, but even though it is that, like, it's... It's very indescribable, and it's something that you need to experience. And I feel like we all experience it, and we all have experienced it. But anyway, I'm sorry. I'm getting so sidetracked now. <laughs> I just realized, I thought I was talking to everybody. I'm like, wait, no, I am doing a reading for Chrissy right now. <laughs> oh, time <laughs> we are out of time as well. Okay, cool. Um, but yes, I hope that all made sense to you, Chrissy. I, I'm, I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you calling. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Chris. All right. Hey, you take it easy, Chrissy, and right. uh, good luck with that. And uh, just push one to mute yourself, okay? Um, who did we say is next? I have Jackie. Can you push one on your phone or unmute your mic? I will do it for you. There you go. Oh, I will do it for you. Okay. Oh, you there? thanks. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? What's up? Hey, I think it was so good that that daughter told her mother that I think I am lesbian mm-hmm. because, like, so many kids would never have the courage to do that. So that just speaks to the relationship that they have. Oh, yeah. I definitely agree. Thank you for that. It's really oh, cool. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, so, so I don't have a question. I just wanted to, you, you know, see what you see, what's up with me. <laughs> Oh, excellent. I always love the name Jackie. I don't know why, but it makes me smile. <laughs> it really does. <laughs> um, lots of changes for you, too. I feel like everyone's changing now, though. It's such an interesting, crazy world, isn't it? Like, I feel like time's going faster. I feel I feel like, you know, just people are it's not getting crazier, but just people are kind of getting, like, a little bit more... <laughs> <laughs> interesting and I don't know the world's just a really interesting place um, and they kind of want to say like good on you Jackie for like being a smile for a lot of people um, I think that's something that you remind a lot of people about um, especially your laugh <laughs> I feel like that's like echoing in the holes of heaven and everyone's just saying like yes sweet sweet laughter <laughs> um but you've been doing some really interesting, beautiful reflection. Um, okay, so doubts. This is this is. I'm glad we're diving into this because this is a good theme for the night. Um, doubts are a really wonderful thing. A lot of people say, "Don't doubt. Don't do it. It's bad. It's wrong. Don't do this. Like, don't doubt yourself. It holds you back. It, it pulls you down." Like I say that. I I say that all the freaking time. Um, and it's true. In a sense, in a lot of ways, yes, it is true. But in a lot of ways, it's also incredibly supportive in the sense that, like, yes, in the sense that, like, dark, I mean, lightness brings, you know, darkness to light or whatever. In that sense, yes. But also in the sense that it's just kind of who you are and it's just kind of what you wanted to do and it's just kind of how you wanted to figure it out. And, like, why do we have to get so caught up in it? Why can't we just think sometimes, like, oh, like, I just want to give up. Like, this is really hard. Like, why can't we do that? Um, this is a big message for you for just like self, like self love, yes, but more like, good word for it. <sighs> oh my god, they just say self self. <laughs> so it's just like really being in yourself and being like one hundred percent in support of you, 
So even if you're in like the worst state and like, I don't know, you spent all day being really rude to people and I don't know, you threw like, you threw like food at like, I don't know, like a little kid and you know, you littered and I don't know, you didn't tip someone when they were really nice to you. Like you're just like a mean person all day. I want you to still end that day being like, like, I'm really glad I'm me. I'm really glad I had this day. Like, this is a great day. I'm really glad that, well, not even like that. You can just say it like, I'm glad that I was mean. Like this is this is a good mean day. I can I can be like that if I want to. Um, I know you're not going to do that because I know you're not that type of person. But that's just kind of an, a, a dr- dramatic kind of symbol to represent those little things that you just overjudge yourself. Like so, it's kind of like you judge yourself or you do something that's somewhat negative. That's just somewhat you can feel the impact. I think you're very sensitive, so you can feel the kind of impact it has on you in that moment. But then what kind of makes it worse or makes it a bad thing is when you then add on to that saying, oh, my God, it is bad and it is wrong. I shouldn't be doing this and this isn't who I am. And you kind of add all these kind of labels to it. And I don't think you say it like that. It's not like you're actually saying those words in your mind, but it's you can feel the energy of it just getting bigger. I think you're incredibly sensitive. And I want to see I don't I'm not sure if you know what like uh, Qigong is or like it's kind of like Tai Chi. But I can totally see you just sitting there, like, weaving energy and, like, flowing energy throughout your body. You're incredibly in tune with that. Um, You could, like, what's that movie, Kung Fu Panda 3, where he's, like, using his chi to, like, make a a plant grow and just, like, sprout out of nothing. Anyway. Ah. (laughs) Um, Yeah, this is something that I really want you to kind of play with and see, like, Whoa, like, I'm making a big deal out of, like, nothing. Oh, it's not even... Let me say it like this. This is a better way of saying it. Um, I'm making that one moment affect these next 100 moments. You know what I mean? Like, I'm making this one, like, maybe it was, yeah, like, a little mistake. Or, like, maybe you did say something wrong or something weird and you you felt uncomfortable. Like, maybe you did feel really sad for a moment. Maybe... I don't know, maybe you got really upset at someone and, like, you just got so angry and you just, you know, you just felt the anger. I'm not even saying about, like, reacting to people, even just feeling these emotions, um, releasing that judgment of them and just kind of going, like, like, I I kind of feel, it's, it sounds so weird whenever I say it, but I feel really kind of happy when I'm, when I'm sad or when I'm angry. Like, I can definitely, like, be in the sadness and be really sad, but then I just kind of, there's always this moment and I feel it. It's so beautiful. Like I feel this kind of subtle shift. There's nothing physical, but I feel this shift. And then like, I start to smile, even though I like, I feel sadness or I feel anger or whatever. And I'm smiling and I'm not smiling because like, Oh, it's, it's funny and stupid or anything. It's just more smiling in this, this appreciation of it and realizing, Oh my God, this, this kind of negative emotion that we've kind of branded it with, you know, this negative idea, this emotion is just helping me lead to this next brighter, more exciting emotion for me. Um, Mm -hmm. The only kind of, the idea of negative emotion is really things that we just don't want. Like things that our soul is just like, no, we just, that's not where we need to focus. That's not like who we want to be. That's not like, you know, who we are or whatever. That's why it feels bad when you do something that like, you know, isn't, (laughs) isn't really you. Like it feels bad because that's your soul just being like, and soul, I guess, is a, it makes it yeah. sound kind of like scary and culty or something. But it's just your, <laughs> it's just you, your whole essence, your whole, like, everything speaking through, just being like, no, this is not exactly, like, who you are. But it's not a, it's not a judgment. It's not a, this is wrong. It's, like, guidance is a good word, but it still implies that there's a negative aspect or a wrong path or something like that. It's not that. It's not that at all. We just wanted this guidance. We just wanted the guidance system. We wanted that. We wanted that kind of click. Because we got like, okay, I don't know, maybe some people can hear God or like, you know, Jesus or something speaking in their ear. But most of us don't have that, you know, connection or whatever. Most of us don't feel it that way. We'll experience it that way. Usually we feel it. Usually we feel it through energy and through emotions and all that kind of thing. Uh So we have this emotional kind of guidance. And this is like a really... I feel like you're really going through this time of realizing that you don't have to feel this way or you don't have to be in this situation and go through this kind of experience again. Um, But really notice the feelings. Really notice when you kind of, it's not like you're, 
it's not a bad thing again. Like I, I want to repeat what I said at the beginning. Like these these moments of doubt or getting overwhelmed or getting sad or upset, they're nothing bad. They're nothing wrong. Um, mm-hmm. But you know you're a more productive person. You know it's not even that. It's just you want to be happy. You know what I mean? Like everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to feel good or feel comfortable or feel safe or feel content or feel joyous or feel, you know, good. We all want to feel good. So find what you can to do that. But remember, like as much as we can like externally do it, and we can externally do it, and it's great to do it externally, but it's very easy to do it internally in the sense that you can just, and it is true, you can just choose to feel good. You can choose to feel good in the moment, but it takes a little bit of time and practice. Well, for me, it definitely did. <laughs> it took me a long time of just, well, not a long time. I guess that makes it sound like, oh, God, there's a lot of work. But it just took me some time to realize that, like, I really have control over how I feel. I really have the ability to guide myself. And see, again, like these words like control and guide, they don't feel like an accurate way of describing it because I don't feel like I'm forcing anything. I don't feel like I'm neglecting anything i don't feel like i'm you know seeing feeling sadness and then being like oh no i don't want to feel sadness and like dive to happiness it's not this i used to do that (laughs) but it's not like that now it's now just like i feel the sadness and i'm like wow like oh i feel sad okay oh i feel really sad about this like what what is it because i don't know this is this is for me and i don't want people to like kind of follow me blindly like i really encourage everyone to be like what you believe and where you're going is is beautiful and like perfect. So please don't try to be like me. <laughs> but for me, these emotions are just like they. I feel like it's just myself or. How do I put this? Mm. It's kind of like the built up kind of resistance. Oh, resistance is a heavy word, but the built up ideas and concepts and beliefs and all these kind of things that I've kind of got maybe around a topic. So I don't know. Maybe I'm. Okay, I'm I'm at work and I'm like, you know, chopping up <laughs> onions or something and then I look out the window and I see some successful person walking down the street, you know, with like fancy clothes and then, you know, for a second I feel sad because I'm like, oh, I've only got like $400 in my bank account, like I'm so poor, like I feel sad for a moment and like in that moment I'm feeling it and then I'm like, oh, but like, that's kind of okay and like that's kind of cool and like this is kind of exactly what I wanted, like... It's cool to feel like I I missed what I was trying to say. I felt sad and the reason I felt sad is because my idea of him and me kind of got in the way of who I really am. So all oh, that stuff right. I said all that stuff that I was saying was like, you know, like really this is what I wanted and stuff. But that's the me after that's the true me, I guess, whatever the, the, the me I want to be. But I realized that that the reason I was feeling bad wasn't because of him. It wasn't, you know, because of me. It was, well, it was because of me, but in the sense that I... Oh, it's always so hard to put this stuff in a word. Sorry, I'm still, like, learning this and trying to figure all this all out. But <laughs> <laughs> but I just realized that it's my perception of, like, him some, somewhere, some journey in my life, or just in this moment, I see this guy as better than me because of the clothes, because of the watch, because of whatever, because of what he said or because of what he looked like, whatever it is. I had that perception, that idea of he is better and I am less or he has more and I have less. And that's why I felt that negative emotion because that's my my soul or whatever saying, oh, hey, like that's like, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I always get cautious saying that because true is like, we, we hold that really tightly as like a word of right and wrong. But like, I mean true in the sense of like true to you. You know what I mean? Like true to who you are. But anyway, I don't, I feel like I've just talked a lot and I haven't asked you if, you know, you had any questions or <laughs> if any of this um, I Well, I think the reason why you picked up on that, like the doubt mm-hmm. thing is, um, so I took a national exam over the weekend and I won't know the score for like, four to six weeks, and I thought I was going to get the results immediately. I thought it was computer-based, and it wasn't. And um, I said to myself, well, you know, this is a good time to let go. (laughs) And um, even though, you know, that's not my strong suit. Um, And so, you know, it's, it's you know, kind of a big deal uh, about this exam. And so... You're still waiting? Oh, yeah, I only took it on Saturday. Okay. 
Well, patience is a fun thing. Um, <laughs> I just kind of want to leave it at that because that's just like so true. <laughs> but no, patience is a really fun thing. Um, look at it like this. Don't sit and wait for it. Just sit and get excited for it. You know what I mean? Like, just get excited for, like, even, not even the results, just it coming. And just, like, mm-hmm. whenever you're, like, oh, like, I don't have it yet, just be, like, oh, but it's coming. Like, kind of be childlike in that state and just be, like, oh, but it's coming. And, like, I can't wait to see, like, when it comes. And, like, I wonder what day it's going to come because I have no idea when it's going to come. Like, let's mm-hmm. see what happens. Like, kind of lighten the whole situation up. Not because that's going to affect the results. Well, it can't, I don't know, maybe it will, but it's more just it affects you right now and, like, why let something in the future stand in the way of who you are right now? You know what I mean? Like, don't... And this is a really big thing for, like, exams and tests and waiting on results and all this kind of stuff. Um, we kind of hold things up for it, and we don't need to. We don't need to. Like, you can if you want. It's mm-hmm. perfect in truth, but... <laughs> But you don't have to. Don't feel like you need to hold things up. Don't feel like you need to kind of, um, what's the word? Sit and wait for it. Yeah. Like, you don't need to sit and wait for it. Yeah. You get excited for it. When you think about it, like, oh, it's not here yet. Like I said, just be like, oh, but it's coming. And, like, just get excited about it. And the second you're excited about it, you're going to get bored with it. And you're going to get distracted and think about something else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is good. Which is what you should do. Um mm-hmm. That's why people say follow your emotions and follow your joy and stuff because your joy and your emotions always lead you exactly where you not need to be, but I guess really want to be. I'm most interested in being. Um, yeah. But you're incredibly qualified, so don't let you know. Don't let any any piece of paper stand in your way. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah. But no, I I think just be patient. Like be patient. You will. <laughs> be patient. Use this time to be patient. You said you weren't very good at it, so maybe this is a cool opportunity to be okay. Like, how patient can I be? And I think that's gonna just gonna make it easier for you. And that's the most important thing. Like I said, we all want to feel good, and so just feel good, feel good now. Like that thing will make you excited or disappointed, but that's when yeah. it comes. Think about that when it comes, when it's happening, because that's one thing that you don't really like. You have no control over it right now. This right. is a perfect, like I said, like a perfect time to be patient, perfect time to just sit and see what happens. See how, see how, this will be fun. See how, like, non-caring you are about it, but how in love with it at the same time. Like, how in love with the results you are at the same time. So, this okay. is a really, like, exciting, I, well, I think it's exciting. This idea <laughs> of, I love you so much, I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> it just means no matter what like okay you 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 go have a seed and you say to the seed I love you so much I don't care or you can say like this maybe I love you so much I don't care what you do and then you plant the seed and this whole idea just simply means no matter how you grow no matter how many leaves you have no how many branches you have no how many sprouts whatever it doesn't matter how many or how beautiful or how green I'm still going to love you I don't care about this physical you, I just care about the essence of you. And I don't know, that's a very powerful thing, I think. It's a very beautiful place to be. And it's a thing that I don't always remember, but I wish I remembered more often because you, like, I, I never feel afraid when I'm in that space. But anyway, uh-huh. anyway, any other questions? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so, but thank you. Thank you. All thank right. you. I feel like that was more All of right, a have a good night. <laughs> Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. you, you, you too. Thank right. you too. Bye bye. Okay, push one on your phone if you can for me. Okay. Oh, here I'll do it for you. Um. Okay, Carol, are you up next? Uh, let me find you. There you are. Hi, Carol. <laughs> oh, hi, Chris. How are you? Okay. How are you? Ah, uh, I'm just fine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. How so are you <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, you know, <laughs> don't, don't, so, so, do you have a do you have a specific question, or do you just want him to let him go into just, just whatever, let him do whatever he wants to tell me? <laughs> That's always dangerous. I gotta say that it's always. Dangerous. <laughs> uh, so, okay. <laughs> really just, 
really good things, honestly. Um, you feel you've definitely grown. You're like they kind of. I don't know, maybe it's a little cheesy, but this is how they say it. Your wings have gotten bigger. <laughs> you oh, have yeah. grown. You really have grown. I feel like your chest has kind of gotten bigger. Your heart is, like, pulsing even louder. Um, who you are is really speaking to you, not only to the world, but really to you. And it's a really beautiful thing. Um, the more you kind of flow with it and play with it, the more exciting and, like, interesting this will all be. Um uh-huh. You know, like, did you hear, like, what I said at the end of that last reading, that idea of, like, I love you, I love you so much, I don't care. This whole uh-huh. idea of loving the experience, just loving the experience, that's it. It's not even, like, what it is, what you're experiencing. You're just loving the idea, like, oh, I'm just experiencing life. Like, just loving that is a very kind of good place to start off, I guess. Um, I always admired my grandmothers, because both of them, I, I never knew my grandfathers, I don't think, I'm, I'm sure they would have been like this too, but my grandmothers were always in this kind of, well, not always, but <laughs> usually, <laughs> in this space of kind of, it doesn't matter what's happening, they're just, like, kind of happy. You know what I mean? They're just kind of happy with what's going on. There's just stuff happening. So they're just, like, you know, happy. And I don't know, like, now that I say it like that, it makes them sound a little crazy. At that time, <laughs> she was not crazy. She was very sane. And she was just, like, I asked her, oh, when was it, like, maybe four years ago? Like, about that, because that's something I always noticed. I would always look at her when I was doing something or, like, me and my, you know, siblings were playing, and she'd just be sitting there, like, kind of lightly smiling. (laughs) And, you know, she just said, like, hey, I'm just content with you, you know what I mean? And so I want you to kind of play with this idea, with your experience. Um, Because I feel like a lot of things are going on. A lot of things are happening, and things are changing, and people throw opinions at you, and people are asking you to do this, and requests for coming in. I don't know, there's a lot of things going on. So just kind of, like I said, go with it and see how much you can flow. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Energy-wise, though, I feel like you're very... um, Oh, my God, this is a dramatic word, but lethargic is the word they give me. Um, They encourage you... And it doesn't mean you have to go running. God, no, don't, don't start running. You don't have to do something dramatic like that, but... They kind of just give me an image of you just like moving more and maybe it doesn't have to be yoga, but just kind of getting your, yourself into like some kind of body movement. Um, the only reason, like there's many reasons I'm sure, but the reason that comes up is because it helps you focus your mind. And I think that's kind of like what you're wanting in a lot of ways. Like I feel like there's a lot of distractions and you're being like pulled in places or something like that. But anyway. This will help you kind of focus your mind and it'll also give you, like, space for yourself. Um, but yeah, they just kind of say, like, movements. And it could be, like, I don't know. I loved <laughs> when I was in China, they had these amazing, like, scenes of, of just all these people. And they, they weren't doing the same thing. They are all doing their own stuff. But, like, in a big public park and all these people are just there, like, twisting like this or, like, doing this. Or, you know, like, like swirling their arms or whatever, just doing all these weird different movements. And they would do it for a long time. And I never understood that until I did Kundalini Yoga. And, like, that really taught me. It wasn't really about the movement at all. It was about the experience of just doing something repetitive, repetitively um, for a little while. You know what I mean? Like, how often do we really do that? Like, we are very distracted. We're very kind of caught up in things in the world. Um, meditation is always good. Like people always recommend meditation, and I think that's a good thing because that makes you a little bit more present. Um, I think I need a lot of meditation. I don't do enough meditation, and I know I need more meditation because I think my mind is very sporadic. But you know, that's okay. <laughs> this this movement stuff will kind of it'll really help you focus. Um, I really feel like you're connected to spirit in so many beautiful ways, but especially your heart. I feel it's so much in the center of your heart. Um, I feel like you've definitely got, um, like, tension and stuff there. There's, like, a lot of kind of, I don't know, there's, like, a lot of history or there's just a lot of, like, people that are involved with you there, but I just definitely feel, like, tense in my chest. And, like, it's kind of like my lower chest, like my sternum, I think I should say, yeah, like, around that area. Um, Mm -hmm. It feels very... It just feels like there's, it's tense, and that's okay. So okay. It's not like, oh, no, bad sign, warning, look out. It's nothing like that. Um, they're just bringing attention to it, and they're just saying, like, like it does have, it has partly to do with, like, your self kind of self-worth. 
really looking at that and really kind of seeing how not only like beautiful but like worthy and you know respectful and kind and honest like really looking at yourself and kind of giving yourself those those gifts of self appreciation um I do encourage you to sit in front of the mirror like you don't have to do it religiously every day or anything like that you can but um just sit in, maybe like you'll do it once maybe once that's that's good enough for me <laughs> um, but sit in front of the mirror and just kind of just looking at yourself and really kind of doing your best to to direct your thoughts and really see like I always recommend doing this first like first just looking at yourself and just seeing what kind of happens in your mind maybe do that for like a couple minutes or like five minutes or something and just kind of let your mind run and you think about things and you maybe look at other ways and get distracted that's just you getting into the space and then once you kind of really start looking into your eyes and looking at yourself you like it kind of happens automatic I think you just kind of start appreciating things you just kind of start seeing things differently um but yeah like really kind of play with that because it's not like you're lacking in self love it's not like you're lacking in self appreciation um they kind of put it like this like it's a new level it's a new kind of stage like you're kind of wanting more and the answer is yourself you know what i mean i feel like there's a lot of things that you want but like it's not like you're the change and you're going to bring it about like like it is that but not like in a physical sense i just mean in kind of like a personal emotional sense your ability to change yourself is the biggest power you have and they encourage you to use that and they encourage you to, to guide that and to protect that and to honor that you know like to really respect that like hey like i judge i judge myself a lot or i should listen to how i feel more like how much do i really care about how i'm feeling am i doing this and does this make me feel good like how fulfilled am i right now like it's not sometimes i get worried that people think these questionings are like to put you down <laughs> it's not it's a really kind of it's like i'm trying to think of a good way to put it but it's just almost like sometimes that question of like like you're like laughing at something like why am i doing this like i should be doing something else like it's just this kind of silly like questioning of like oh like i don't feel good doing this like why am i even like sitting here um why am i even like you know talking to this person or why am i even working at this job or why am i even you know listening to this crazy spiritual australian dude like why i don't know i don't know but your feelings do like that's your best guide like your mind really Oh, your mind can pick up a story. Your mind can tell you, "Oh, like this is good because of this and this is bad because of that." But the only like kind of what word should I use for this? <laughs> the the most valuable, I guess, or the like killing two birds with one stone kind of thing. The most valuable thing is your emotions because the goal of pretty much everything that you want is to feel good. Like you want I don't know, I think everyone knows this, but if you want money, you know, the reason you want money is because when you have money you feel good and the reason you want that nice car is because you're going to feel really good driving it and all that kind of thing. Like the reason is the good feeling. So guide your feeling and see what you can do because you're incredibly powerful and incredibly intuitive and um you have the ability. You know what I mean? Like the reason I'm bringing it up is probably because you're already doing it and because you're well on your way into it and I'm just kind of being the external reflection no not the reflection they're just being the external kind of sign saying hey you're doing this and you're excelling and the confirmation <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're confirming me nick <laughs> yeah that's pretty much what i feel like my job is is just reaffirming what everyone is already doing this is something you should job sometimes <laughs> yeah does that all make sense <laughs> yes it does it does it actually does nick it does And I appreciate you telling me. Are we all good? So like, We're good. We're good. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. You have a wonderful night. It's always fun to talk to you. You're always such a wonderful energy. You're a magical oh, thank you. fairy angel goddess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good night, Nick. You too. Thank you. All right. Hey, girl, thanks. Take it easy, woman. Okay. Okay, thanks, girl. Um, okay, so, Popeye, unmute yourself, because I don't know where you're at. Popeye the Sailor Man.
Hi, I'm here, Chris. Are you there? Yeah, I am. What's okay, going on? Good. Oh, not too much. Um, I wanted to uh, have Nick talk to me a little and um, tell me what he foresees for me in the near future. Okay, okay. excellent. I like it. Um Right now, though, is way more exciting. <laughs> the future is too mysterious and general and ever-changing. This is the exciting thing. This is a really fun... I think you'll actually like this. This is a really fun thing to play with. Um, when you're... It's not like waiting for the future, but when, when you've got future plans, when you've got goals, when you've got things set like that, when you've got these you know, really wonderful, oh, I can't wait for this to happen... You can kind of look at it like this. You can either look at it like, okay, like I've got to get there. Like I've got to get there. I'm going up there. Like that's that's like the thing. <laughs> you know, this is the goal or whatever. Or you can look at it as like, hmm, how should I put it? Just like another thing on the shelf. There's another thing on the shelf right in front of you, and it's it's all there and it's all lined up. It's not. It's not like you need to do something to get there. It's not like you need to go over there and do this. It's not like you need to, like, you know, have this hairstyle or anything like that. You don't have to do anything to get it. It really comes down to, like, the kind of, the whole self deciding to take it. But anyway, <laughs> I'm getting sidetracked. So the best thing that you can do with anything that comes into the future is be present with yourself, is be present here with you, working with you in the now, working with, I guess, I could, you can call it self-love or self-empowerment or whatever that is, but just working on you and being as much of, as, as in love with yourself as you can be. And it's not like, oh, like, I love, like, romantic love, like, I'm obsessed with myself, like, I'm the most important person in the world. It's not that kind of sense. It's just the sense of you're unconditional with yourself. You know, you're not expecting things. You're not judging this. You're not, like, critiquing yourself and, you know, putting yourself through this anguish and that kind of thing. The reason for that <laughs> is because it puts you in the most beautiful open space to meet the people that you need to meet, to find the person that you need to find, to get the job that you need to get, to figure out this answer, to, to accomplish this achievement. Um, there is something so, and we all, like, everybody knows this, knows this, I think, but there is something incredibly powerful in how you feel and good feeling and, and feeling love and feeling... Yeah, and you don't have to be like, I'm, I don't know, sometimes people think that I'm like, hee hee, like this happy, like, I don't know, leprechaun all day, like smiling and dancing and all this kind of thing. Like some days, maybe, but not like every day. Some days I'm just incredibly just content in this mellow, steady pace. Um, and some days I'm definitely sad and some days I'm definitely angry. <laughs> but the reason I'm bringing this up is because we kind of just get caught up in these, these future things. We kind of get caught up in what's to come and we forget about like how really perfect and powerful this moment is. And maybe it's not this moment, but maybe it is the next moment in five minutes when you kind of forget everything else and you're just looking up at the stars and you just kind of get ra like wrapped up in it all. Or you know, you're watching a TV show and you've forgotten about everything else that happened during the day and everything that's going to happen tomorrow and you're laughing your ass off at like some person, I don't know, sitting on a toilet and... I'm not going to say anything else because I could go to weird places. So just, you know, funny things on the TV. <laughs> um, but the future is coming and the future is really there. And I really want you to like kind of like reassure yourself and know that like things are working out for me. Like the reason I think these lines, like, you know, this, the affirmations, I think that's what people call them, or like these kind of self-empowerment lines and, and, you know, good feeling words and, the reason I think people do that is just to, like I, like I said, to get into that good feeling, to get into the like the good state. So use them if you must. Use them if you want to. I, I use them sometimes if I'm like in the wrong state. But it's not actually about telling yourself. It's really about feeling it and going through it and believing it and knowing it and that kind of thing. But anyway, I feel like I'm getting sidetracked and you need to ask, well, you want to ask a question. Do you want to ask a question? <laughs> and does this make sense? <laughs> Yes, Nick, thank you. That makes perfect sense. And um, yes, I do have a question. And uh, my question regards an upcoming celebration and um, a particular friend who I've been kind of on the outs with. Mm. 
Um, and I'm wondering if that friend will decide to join me for this celebration. Hmm. Okay. You can go about this a couple ways. <laughs> and the reason I give you choices is because really, in truth, every single option is like, is great, is interesting, is your choice. Um, so you can go about it the way that like, you know, you might choose to do it in this like, this is kind of how I feel you'd go about it now, is you'd think about it, you'd wonder about it, you'd maybe worry about it sometimes, you'd feel sad about it sometimes, you'll, you know, you'll think about it, maybe you'll call the person once or twice in this because you were like questioning that day and you weren't sure if they're going to come and you really wanted to do something and you thought maybe calling them would sort it out and like, you know, asking them about it would make it work. And you could go through that kind of path. Great path, interesting path, different emotional path for sure, but it's just another wonderful path. Um, you could go about it, I don't know, just being like, whatever, like, I don't even care, like being kind of frustrated and angry. <laughs> and be like, I don't even care if this person comes. I'm over them. I don't care. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to do my own thing and just focus on you and, you know, go on that adventure. Or you could be in the space of like, well, if they come or not, that doesn't matter because I know that I'm the most important thing for me and I care about me and, you know, it doesn't matter what other people do because I can't control other people. There's nothing I can do about that other person. You know, as much as I want them to be be this or do that or want this, I can't make them do that. And no matter how much I dance and perform, they're not going to change. They need to make the choice. They need to make the decision. Um And there's many, 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 many other ways that you could do it. <laughs> Um, so the reason I'm saying it like this is because you have the choice. You know, you have the choice of how this kind of story is going to play out. And you can either you can either sit in the place of like, you know, is the person going to come and like make it a an issue, make it a kind of worry, make it a concern, make it a fear, or are you going to make it an interest? Are you going to make it a curiosity? Are you going to make it a, you know, a pondering? Are you going to make it, you know, a like I said, I don't care, a, you know, a non-caring, a nonchalant kind of attitude. Like, see how you want to kind of tell the story about this. Because um, you're not going to know until the moment. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or maybe like a couple of days or a week before. Or maybe sooner. But um, you're not going to know until you know. You know what I mean? You're not going to know until you know it. So the best you can do right now, if it's really straining your mind and stressing you out, the best thing you can do is kind of find a way to feel the way you want to feel about it. And just know just know that it's not the thing, it's not the situation that's really making you feel this way or that. It's how you're thinking about it. It's how you're kind of journeying about it in your mind, how you're telling the story of what's actually happening in, happening in your experience. Um, okay, well, that but I sounds... Think that's uh, really, sorry? Yeah, well, that sounds very um, logical to me. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I usually am kind of a person of logic, and oh. uh, you know what I hear you saying is that I need to just quit worrying about it and let events unfold the way they're going to unfold. Yeah, because that's like as much as like we want to think that we have control and we, like we do, but like we not like this we, not the mind, not the you know Nick Fox, this identity that I am here, like. I don't have as much power as, you know, thank God, because the things that we think and the things that we want in our mind are usually not, not usually, I shouldn't say that, it's a little mean, but <laughs> we don't usually know what we need. You know, we don't really know truly what's like kind of the juiciest, most exciting thing for us. Um, but our whole self does, our whole soul or whatever. And that's why spiritual teachers do teach this whole idea of like, let the flow happen, allow it to be, you know, it'll be the way it will be, because yes, in truth, it will be like, we, as much as we want to control it, we can't. We can control how we, you know, how we're feeling. We can control what we're thinking. We can control, you know, our physical actions and our interaction with the world around us. But like I said, we can't change that outside world. So yeah. Um, but you can, like I said, you can also feel good about it. Just remember that. Like you can still feel good about something that's unknown and mysterious and and was once worrying, but now is like, oh, I don't know. Maybe maybe just kind of like like I said, like nonchalant about it. Maybe just like I don't know if the person's coming. Like they kind of say, give yourself a break. You know, you you put a lot of feelings, you put a lot of emotions and stuff, a lot of care into this person. Um, 
put a little bit of time into yourself. You know what I mean? Put a little bit of like care and effort into you and focus on that because that will really help you the most. Uh, you know what? That makes more sense than anything that anyone has said to me about the situation or that I have thought about the situation. And I thank you very much for your insights, Nick. That's all no, my pleasure. To hear you on the show and to have you in some small way come into my life. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I really do. If you want, totally check out my website. Send me an email. You can find I'm not sure if you're on Facebook, but find me on Facebook as well. And if you already you know, follow me, send me a message anytime is what I want to say. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks. Yes, we're already Facebook friends, I believe. Okay, cool. Yeah, I think I have a feeling we might. We will be. Awesome. Well, you have a wonderful night. Thank Thank you you so much. You too. Great. Thanks, Papa. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Uh, Okay, so, Nick. um, Yes. That's it. That's it. Thank you so much. And uh, no, thank you. We 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 just love it when you're here, and uh, we get people that show up just for you. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Well, I show up for so, all of you, uh, you guys as well. <laughs> we'll see you in a month's time. Cool. And um, take it easy, and keep on making that awesome jewelry. You're doing a great thank job. You. Thank you. you guys I know. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Find Nick's uh, website at nicklove.com and uh, Facebook, uh, Nick Fox Love. Uh, just Google it for crying out loud. You'll find the dude, okay? <laughs> uh, and go to my Instagram. Go to my Instagram. What's my Instagram? It is Nick Fox, my name, but with two Ks and two Xs. So N I C K K F O X X. I love my Instagram. I'm having so much fun with it right now. It's like an artistic piece. <laughs> well, you are an artist kind of guy, you know what I mean? And so, uh, so I really appreciate your time and uh, so we'll see you in a month and, and uh, take it easy, okay? Awesome. Thank you. I love you all. Thank you so much for the calling in and listening and Keep the love. <laughs> Keep that hair growing, man. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. You win, you Next win, month, you're gonna, you it's going to be like down here. <laughs> you rock long hair. I like it on you. That way. Okay. Thanks. Um, Thanks. All right. See you later. Okay, kids. Uh, so now Bye. I don't know if you guys are hanging out or thanks, Nick, uh, or what we're doing. So I'm going to play a song, and um, and then we'll see what you guys are doing. I had one lined up, and then I scrolled. Uh, where is it? Well, let's let's just go with um, – no, I don't want that one. Where did it go to? Oh, there it is. Um, here, let's do this one. All right, guys, everyone's gone just about, so we're going to wrap it. Here, we'll go with this. We're going to go with this. Thanks, everyone. And now it's time to say goodbye from Chris and all her friends. We would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next show to this same time and place. Even if you don't phone in, we'd like to see the face. Shadow Pop. It's curious time. Y'all come back now. Yeah. Here.